In this video, we're gonna cover how to set up Nintendo on a modded Nintendo Wii or Wii U. One of my favorite things to come out of the Nintendo Wii homebrew scene is Nintendo. This program essentially lets you run Nintendo GameCube games at the full power that a Nintendo Wii provides, thus providing better frame rates and unlocked frame rate games, and gives you the option of using many different controller options, including Wiimote Plus Classic Controller, a number of USB HID supported controllers, or on the Wii U, the Wii U gamepad. Over the years, Nintendo has come to be about perfect in its compatibility, with only a few minor outlying issues still remaining, and you even get broadband adapter support. Getting Nintendo set up on your system is really simple, so let's go ahead and dive in. So to get started using Nintendo, you again need to have a modified Nintendo Wii, and if you don't, I have a guide on the channel on how to do so, and it already goes over Nintendo coverage on this, so if you haven't set up your Wii for homebrew, this guide will pretty much have you all set up. Now, if you're using a Wii U, you do need to have a modified Wii U, so I do have a video on the channel on how to get that set up, as well as to modify the Wii side to run Nintendo with. Links to these will be in the description below. Next, you are going to need to source some Nintendo GameCube games to use with Nintendo, so I don't really care how you go about getting these, but on my channel we always like to cover the legit route, so if you're interested in backing up your own GameCube games using a modified GameCube or Wii, I'll have a link to this guide in the description below. So we're going to go ahead and get Nintendo downloaded from Fix94's GitHub page, and link to this will be in the description below. So just scroll down to the middle-ish here with the quick installation guide. So we're gonna download loader.dull. We're also gonna grab the meta.xml, so right click on this, save link as, and save it to a folder. And then same thing with the icon.png, right click, save link as, and then just save it somewhere for you to grab. Now, regardless if you're using the Wii or Wii U, you can use either the front SD card slot, or if you have a FAT32 formatted hard drive attached to your system, you can store the Nintendo app and games on either one. Since I am using my Wii U today, I don't have an external hard drive attached to this one, so I'm just using a 256 gig SD card for today's demonstration. SD cards aren't the best for the games, as the Wii and Wii U SD card slot can introduce some performance issues. Might not always be the case, but it can be the case for some titles, so do be aware of that. So I'm just going to get this hooked up to my computer. So here is my Wii U's SD card, so apps for the Wii side of things go inside the apps folder. And we're going to delete our current Nintendo folder because we're trying to show you how to install it right now. Awesome stuff. Anyway, go ahead and create a new folder. You can name it whatever you want, but I mean, it would be most appropriate to name it Nintendo because that's what we're using here. And so like our other Wii apps, if you have installed any, you can see that homebrew has to say boot.dull. So we're gonna rename our loader.dull to boot.dull. If you can't see any extensions in Windows, make sure under view, show, you have file name extensions checked. Should show up, but if it doesn't, that's how you get that to appear. But we're gonna go ahead and open our Nintendo folder and drop all three of these right inside. Perfect. Now as for our GameCube games, they need to be either in ISO, GCM, CISO format. You could also use an extracted format, but it's easier to just use ISO, GCM, or CISO. And for the best compatibility, ISO and GCM is definitely preferable. So I have my collection of GameCube games right here in this folder. So just gonna open back up my Wii U SD card here real quick. So on the root directory of the SD card or USB hard drive, if you're using that, we are gonna create a new folder and we're gonna simply name it games, just like so. And then for all of our single disc GameCube games, they can just go in as is, nothing special needs to happen with these. So just copy them to the root of your games folder. And another reminder, your SD cards need to be formatted into FAT32 format with cluster sizes of 32K. If for whatever reason Nintendo throws you up an error when you try to run it, reformat your SD card with 32K clusters and try it again. If it still doesn't work, you could try changing that up to 64K clusters. And the same thing goes for an external hard drive or USB drive. You need to make sure it is formatted into FAT32 
with 32K cluster sizes. And as for our two disc games, we need to make a subfolder for each of these. So we're just going to start with Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes here. So we're just gonna copy that name. And now we're gonna copy disc one and two into that folder. And so we need to rename disc one game and disc two as disc two. So it'll look like this. And then we just need to repeat this process with all of our other two disc games. So again, disc one needs to be renamed simply game.iso.ciso.gcm, whichever extension you're using. And disc two needs to be renamed disc2.iso or gcm or ciso. And once you have those games prepared, you just need to copy them over to your SD card or USB hard drive. With all of our games in place, we are ready to test it out on the Wii or Wii U system. So we're going to go ahead and close out of all this, move the SD card or hard drive over to our system, and try it out. All right, so here we are on my Wii U system. So just going to get booted into the VWE side here so we can check out Nintendo. So my Wii U is set to auto-boot its VWE into the homebrew channel here. So we should see all of our homebrew apps pop up momentarily. There they are. And here is Nintendo that we just added into it. So to load into Nintendo, just select it and then select load. So for this part of the demo, I am using a Wii Remote plus Classic Controller. So here we go. Once Nintendo has loaded up, you can choose between the SD card slot or USB. And for the final time, I will mention that if either of these devices don't see your GameCube games, you will probably need to reformat your drive and you want to ensure that you're using those 32K clusters. And if that never seems to work, you could try 64K and see if that helps. But I'm gonna select the SD card here. And there we go, there are all of the games that I have put into that games folder. So we could see that all of our single disc games are here, as well as our two disc games. And now to load a game, all we need to do is select it by pressing A, but before doing so, I'd recommend pressing B to go into your settings screen because there's a lot in here that you might wanna change. The first one being cheats, I will cover this momentarily, but if you're not using an actual GameCube memory card, so for example, on a Wii U, you're gonna to wanna to enable memory card emulation, that way you can actually save your games. Then we have options like Force Progressive Scan, so this will force games that didn't have 480p modes to run in 480p. For the most part, there are a couple exceptions to this. And then we also have a Force Widescreen Patch. So this runs like it does on Dolphin, so all the limitations that you see in Dolphin are also on this one. So I don't like to use this one very much. There's native widescreen cheats you can use on a lot of games that are far more effective than this. Next, unlock read speed. So if you want your games to load faster, you could turn this option on and they will load as fast as they can, but at the same time, this can break a number of games. So I typically tend to leave this one off just to ensure compatibility, but test it for yourself, see what you think. Next up, Wii U widescreen. So this option will set Nintendo to run in four x three or 16 by nine on Wii U systems. This option doesn't do anything on an original Wii console. This is just for Wii U. So if you want, the game to be stretched into an anamorphic widescreen presentation, leave this option on. Great for games that have 16 by nine built into them, or if you're using widescreen patches. But if you wanna have the original four by three aspect ratio, turn this option off. On original Wii systems, you can turn on drive access LED. So the front LED around the disc drive of your Wii will flash as the SD card or hard driver being accessed. It's really cool to see, I like turning this one on. Next, you can set the number of players, but this one is only for systems that have actual controller ports set your language, video modes. So I like to force a D flicker on this one for NTSC. And then if you enable memory card emulation, you can choose how many blocks are on your emulated memory cards. So 251 is the most stable, so that's the one I like to use. And every game by default will have its own memory card. If you want them all to save to the same card, you could turn mem card multi on. 
Next, native control. So this is for those of you running on a backwards compatible Wii. You could turn this on and it will use the native controller ports and memory card ports. So you're able to do things like Game Boy Advance link cables and everything you would expect out of the system. Next up, video width. This is set to auto by default and most of you could probably use it this way, but if you wanna set a manual screen width, you could do that here as well as screen position. And if you wanna patch any PAL 50 games, you could do that here as well. And Nintendo does work with uh, Triforce Arcade mode. So if you have any Triforce Arcade stuff, you can enable that here. I'm not covering that because I don't have any Triforce stuff. Next, Wiimote Classic Controller Rumble. If you're using a Wii Remote plus Classic Controller and you want it to rumble, you could just enable this option here. Next, skip IPL. So if you place a GameCube IPL file on your SD card or USB drive, wherever you're running Nintendo from, it will do the original GameCube boot up animation. So you could choose to skip that with yes or not with no. I'll cover setup on this in the extra section following our demo. Next, broadband adapter emulation. Turn this on or off. So if you want to do any network play games with original GameCubes or Dolphin, you can do so. Just make sure you connect with the Nintendo instance last, otherwise it will not find any systems. It has to be the last one you connect to your LAN. And then you could also set network profiles. If you are on a Wii system, you could choose a manual profile to connect to different networks instead of just uh, using the default one in the system menu. And then if you're using the Wii U gamepad, you could set its controller port right here. And another option you might be interested in is the update option. So by pressing X or one on a Wiimote or a classic controller, you can update different things for Nintendo, such as a title database, controllers, and then Nintendo itself. So really recommend doing these on your first run. Now, unfortunately, these updaters aren't very stable anymore. So chances are it will result in a lot of crashes if it decides to work at all. But again, you could try your luck and see if it does. If not, it'll still work without it. But anyway, to play a game, we can now select it with just our A button and it will boot up with our selected preferences. But here we are playing 007 Nightfire on a Wii U system with a Wii Classic controller. So now by default on Nintendo, your button scheme is going to match up with the typical Nintendo button mapping. So A is A, B is B, etc. And if at any point you hold down start and select, it will change this button mapping so that everything shifts clockwise. So this becomes A, B, Y, X, which is a more traditional GameCube button layout. So for example, B is now A. So fire gun, I reload with A in this game. There it is. And so again, hold down start and select, and it could change it back over to typical one-to-one -one mapping for how a Nintendo controller is now. So now A is back to being A. So again, fire and A to reload. So, two options built in for your preference. So now if you want to start doing some multiplayer in Nintendo, you can start loading up different controllers. So you can use more Wii remotes and classic controllers if you'd like, or if you'd like to use something with USB, like a PS3 controller or other HID compliant controllers, a lot of them work without issue. But the USB cord does take precedence over the wireless communication, so I'm gonna plug this PS3 DualShock 3 into the front of my Wii U here. And you can see that it has turned my Wii Remote into player two here. And we can use the DualShock 3 now by pressing the PlayStation button to sync it up. But as you can see, got it hooked up. We're gonna press circle for A because that's the default. And there it is, registered my code name there. And now we can do the same thing for player two on this classic controller. So just gonna press A and there we go, multiplayer, good to go. And so as you can see, both players are able to be controlled and it works exactly as intended. I can't play two people with one hand though, so woo. But my favorite controller option to use on a Wii U for Nintendo or a non-backwards compatible Wii is to use the Wii U GameCube controller port adapter because it gives you perfect GameCube controller support for it. And the Wii U GameCube controller port adapter can still be used in conjunction with Wiimotes and classic controllers, but for example here, I'm going to plug our GameCube controller into port 1. And we can see that the classic controller combo on my Wiimote here has changed over to port 2. And now by pressing A on my GameCube controller, it's player 1. And so, you can see that all four ports work just as intended here. So 
A again, there it is. Port three, press A, there it is. And port four, press A, there it is. So again, perfect way to get one-to-one -one GameCube controls by using a GameCube controller. But anytime you decide you're done playing on Nintendo, you can just press the home button on your Wiimote or Classic controller to reboot back to the homebrew channel. So for anyone that would like to use Nintendo in combination with something like USB Loader GX or Wii Flow, after you have the app in place, you are able to do so. So I'm just gonna show that real quick. So I don't have a hard drive on this one, so I'm just gonna press A to enable SD card mode. So unfortunately, USB Loader GX does have a very specific naming convention you need to do for Nintendo GameCube games. So as you can see, it's only seeing my two disc games here. It's not able to see my single disc games because I didn't name them the way it's looking for. It's expecting them in subfolders for this one. So you can put them all in a subfolder and it will help fix up this problem. But anyway, by going into your settings page here under hard drive settings, you need to make sure that SD card mode is on if your games are stored on the SD card for them to show up in USB Loader GX. If not, they're not gonna work. And under the loading settings, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can set different Nintendo settings such as the widescreen mode, video deflicker, rumble, broadband adapter emulation, and the like. And then again, to play a game, all you need to do is press A on it and load it up. As you can see, here is Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, loaded up through USB Loader GX, running through Nintendo. As for Wii Flow here, I don't have this set up for any USB stuff at the moment, which is fine, but that's all right. So we could set our GameCube partition to USB or SD within the menu here, or both. And same thing with our other options. But anyway, going through the settings page here, you can scroll through and find anything related to GameCube settings and mess around with them, such as video modes, language, default loader, emulated memory card being on, and then the Wii U widescreen. But anyway, go down to the GameCube button there and it will scan the GameCube games on your USB hard drive or SD card. And then again, Wii Flow is a little bit nicer than USB Loader GX. It sees all my single disc games. If you head into an individual game by pressing A and move your cursor, you will see another settings page here that you can press A on and change a bunch of different settings. So you can set your game to be adult only if you have uh, parental controls that you want to enable. Change the default loader, language, video mode. So if you want to change any of this stuff, outside of what the default configuration is, you could just change it in here. But we also get things like the deflicker filter, Ocarina cheat codes, we'll go over that in a second. Uh, the Wii U widescreen mode, emulated memory card, widescreen patches, uh, you can manage the covers and banners, Wii remote classic controller rumble, on or off. If you're using a backwards compatible Wii, you could turn the native ports on or off. Triforce arcade BIOS, skip IPL BIOS. Activity LED, video positions, and patch pal 50 games, as well as the broadband emulation and all that good stuff. But you can just press A on it and then press A again to load. But here we are in custom robo in a multiplayer fight because I didn't want to go through that whole intro cutscene. But there you go, loaded up through Wii Flow and working just great. So both of these options work as great front ends to the default Nintendo loader just to give yourself a way to pretty it up if desired. So the other great thing about Wii Flow is that it gives us an easy way to set up cheats for our GameCube games just by selecting a title. If you move your cursor over, you can see the little settings tab here for individual games. And you can set individual game options here, but over on the next page, we have cheat codes. And if there's no cheat file found, you can press download and it will automatically download cheat codes for your selected title if cheat codes for it exist. And then you are able to go through each individual cheat and turn it on or off in a very easy manner. So if you plan on using cheats, I definitely recommend using WeFlow as a front end just because it just makes everything so much easier. But now let's cover how to get that GameCube boot animation set up to run on Nintendo if you choose to do so. 
So we're back on the homebrew channel here. Because it's safe to eject our Wii, Wii U, SD cards, or hard drives while we're in this menu, so I'm just gonna take my SD card out real quick, move back over to my computer. So the first thing we're gonna need is an IPL file from a GameCube. Again, we do things the legit way on this channel, so I do have a video on how to dump a GameCube IPL from a modded system. Link to this will be in the description below. So here I have my GameCube IPL file. I use this one on Dolphin, so it's just named IPL.bin, and I put it in my US folder. So for Nintendo, these need to be named a specific way depending on region. So if you're planning on adding a GameCube IPL file to your Nintendo install, if it's a US one, it needs to be named IPLUSA.bin. Japanese needs to be named IPLJAP.bin. And for PAL regions, it needs to be named IPLPAL.bin. And if you plan on doing Triforce Arcade stuff, that BIOS needs to be named SegaBoot.bin. So just gonna rename mine to IPLUSA. And once you have your IPL file named correctly, it needs to go on the root of the storage device where you are storing your games. So if, say you're running Nintendo from an SD card, but you're running the games from USB, this needs to go on USB. If you're running everything from SD card, it just goes on the SD card. So here's my Wii USD card, IPL, done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this out and move it back over to the system to demo it for you. All right, so got that SD card put back into my Wii U system here. So just gonna load up Nintendo for this part of the example. All right, so I'm gonna go back into my settings just to make sure that we have skip IPL turned off. All right, skip IPL set to no, perfect. So I'm just gonna go back here and we're just gonna load up a game to test out the animation with. And there it is. Our GameCube boot animation is now playing from the IPL file provided. Now it is worth mentioning that there are numerous reports throughout the years of using a GameCube IPL file reducing overall video quality in Nintendo. If you feel like that is the case for your setup, you can just go ahead and disable this. I haven't messed around enough with it personally or done any side-by-side -side comparisons to notice yet, but it is worth being aware that that is a possibility. I'm not sure if that was ever fixed or not. So again, try your games with the IPL without it, do some side-by-side -side and see if it makes any impact. Now let's talk about how to auto boot into Nintendo or if you're planning on using USB Loader GX or Wii Flow as a front end just to auto boot into it. That way you can just have easier access, don't have to go through a Wii system menu, don't have to go through the homebrew channel unless you want to, you can auto boot to the homebrew channel. Any of those work. But the easiest method is to just use preloader these days instead of having to install forwarders and things like that. Preloader makes auto booting into any of your homebrew much simpler. So if you're on a Wii, you can power the system off, hold down the reset button, and boot up the Wii to boot automatically into Preloader. If you are on a Wii U, you should have this Load Preloader Homebrew available on your Homebrew channel. But regardless, get booted into Preloader on your system. And now from here, navigate down to Load slash Install File. And this will list all of the Homebrew available on your SD card. So if you want to load directly into, say, USB Loader GX, just press A on install file for this one, or if you wanna use Wii Flow, or if you wanna use Nintendo, any of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and automatically install Wii Flow because that's the USB loader I prefer and what I use as my default go-to, and it's really cool just to have my Wii U automatically boot up into that when I go into the Wii channel. And once the install finished, you'll be brought back to this screen. So just go ahead and press B. Now under settings, under auto boot, you can choose between the system menu, the installed file that you just chose, or the homebrew channel. So we're gonna go ahead and set this to installed file. And with that set, just gonna scroll down to save settings and done, exit menu. And just gonna press A to launch into the installed file. And as you can see, that brings us right into Wii Flow, where I can now use all of my GameCube games with ease. And just for an overall boot demo here, so we could go into the Wii menu from uh, Wii U. Okay. 
And there's WeFlow loading up. And there's all my GameCube games ready to go. And one final note that I want to make before we close out this video is that there are forwarders available on the Wii U side that will take you directly into Nintendo. They essentially act as a Wii Virtual Console inject, and this allows you to have access to things like using the Wii U gamepad as a GameCube Classic Controller, or a Wii Classic Controller rather, to play GameCubes on. We didn't cover that method in today's video because it does involve a much more involved process of doing Wii Virtual Console injects, and that just doesn't fall within the scope of what part of Nintendo I want to cover. So if you plan on doing the Wii Virtual Console injects, do know that you could either install your games directly to the Wii U system menu or hard drive, or you could just have a forwarder to Nintendo that will still boot your games off of an SD card. And you do need to use an SD card as when you launch games through a VC inject, none of the USB features will work. So USB hard drives can't be detected. USB HID can't be used. So you are stuck to using only Bluetooth controllers or the Wii U gamepad. And you also lose out on broadband adapter functionality. So I do hope to cover VC injects for Nintendo in the future, but for the scope of this video, it just falls outside what I want to cover. But there you have it, Nintendo is now set up and running, and you are now able to enjoy your GameCube games on all of your Wii systems, backwards compatible or not, as well as the Nintendo Wii U. Nintendo is again an honestly fantastic program and big shout out to everyone who helped contribute to it over the years. It has just been so great to mess with. The performance boosts alone are just fantastic for so many titles. But here at the end, just the usual favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that thumbs up, thumbs down, depending on how much you like today's video, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. Loads of content always coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keep this place going so you can see more guides just like this, please be sure to hit that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Every little bit helps keep us going and we just are massively thankful to everyone who has done so. Thank you so much champs, couldn't do it without you. But until next time, I want to flow internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we will see you all back next video.